In this video, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at a test cross, and then we're going to look at a die hybrid cross. Die hybrid cross means that we're going to follow two traits from parents to the offspring. For a test cross, let's suppose we have a purple pea plant. Purple pea plants can be homozygous dominant, so they can have a capital P and a capital P. They can have both dominant purple alleles. Or a purple pea plant can be a heterozygote, so it can have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. What if you had this purple pea plant and you wanted to figure out what is the genotype? How would you figure that out? We can do a test cross. Here we have purple plant. Let's suppose it is a heterozygote. And here we have a purple plant that is homozygous dominant. How could we figure out what the genotype is? We can cross it with a homozygous recessive plant. If the genotype is heterozygous and we cross it with a white plant, what are the offspring going to be? Let's do a quick Punnett square. This purple pea plant, if the alleles are a dominant and a recessive, and we cross it with two recessive alleles, what are the offspring going to look like? There could be heterozygous offspring. These are going to be homozygous recessive offspring. So 50% of the offspring will be purple and 50% of the offspring will be white. If the parent is a heterozygote purple pea plant. If the parent pea plant is a homozygous dominant purple pea plant, then what will the offspring look like? if you cross them with a homozygous recessive. So now we have dominant alleles and recessive alleles. All of the offspring are going to end up being heterozygous. So all of the offspring will be purple. So if you cross a purple pea plant with a homozygous recessive pea plant, you can determine the genotype of that purple plant. If you get some white offspring, the parent plant had to be heterozygous. If all of the offspring are purple, then that parent plant had to be a homozygous dominant. I want you to think about meiosis. When you have homologous chromosomes inside of the germ cell from the parents, let's suppose we're making sperm, that germ cell is going to go through two meiotic divisions. The first one, the homologous chromosomes separate, and the second one, the sister chromatids separate. So that in the end, all of the gametes are haploid. They have half of the amount of chromosomes as the diploid germline cell. When those chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate, how the homologous chromosomes line up is random, okay? So if there's a maternal and a paternal chromosome, they could go on either side of that metaphase plate and separate into different gametes. If we're going to look at how two traits pass on, there's multiple ways that that can occur now. There's more than four possible offspring outcomes. So Mendel talked about this in, in two laws. One is the law of segregation, and that means that the homologous chromosomes have to separate. The other law is the law of independent assortment, and that means that how those homologous chromosomes line up is always random and different. So different chromosomes can end up in each gamete as long as each gamete has one complete copy of all of the DNA. So in humans, sperm cells always have 23 chromosomes and egg cells always have 23 chromosomes. What I wanna do next is I wanna look at how we can follow two traits. We're going to do a dihybrid hybrid cross. We are going to assume that the two traits are on different chromosomes. If two traits are on the same chromosome, 
they will most likely inherit together if they're close together on that chromosome. So for the dihybrid hybrid cross example, we are always going to assume that the traits are on different chromosomes. Let's suppose we have parent pea plants and the genotypes are these. Now we're gonna look at two traits. We're gonna look at round versus wrinkled or yellow versus green. And we can see from here that round is dominant and yellow is dominant. So wrinkled is recessive, so we'll make that a small r. And green is recessive, so we'll make that a small y. We are going to do the exact same steps that we did for monohybrid crosses. We're going to figure out the genotypes of the parents, which is here. We are given the genotypes of the parents. We are going to figure out the gametes the parents can produce. Then we can figure out the offspring, the genotype and phenotype of the offspring. When when we figure out the gametes for a dihybrid cross, now it becomes just a little bit trickier. Okay, in this parent plant, let's suppose this is the mom and this is the dad. Here we have a homozygous dominant round mom pea plant and that pea plant is a heterozygous yellow pea, pea plant. This big R and this big R, they are alleles. So these alleles are the same. And in for the color trait, the alleles are different. When this mom pea plant makes gametes, the alleles have to separate. So this big R goes into one gamete and this big R will go into a different gamete. Same with these alleles they have to separate into different gametes. So how do we do this? There's a very simple way that we can use to figure out the possible gametes for this mom pea plant, because each gamete needs to now have at least two alleles. It needs to have one of the R's and it needs to have one of the Y's. So we can use this acronym called FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, and last. Okay, here I'm going to rewrite mom's genotype. We are going to make the gametes. Each gamete has to be haploid. This is a diploid mom that has two copies of every chromosome. We need to make haploid gametes that has one copy of every chromosome. So we're going to take the first we can make a gamete with the first chromosomes. We can make a gamete with the outer chromosomes. We can make a gamete with the inner and the last. These are all the possible gametes that this mom pea plant can produce. The dad pea plant can produce a big R with a little y, a big R with a little y, a little R with a little y, and a little R with a little y. So these parents are going to produce different gametes. So remember the acronym FOIL. How about the offspring? How many offspring can these parents make? There are now 16 possible combinations of alleles that can form the offspring. So let's put the mom's alleles on this side. Mom can have a gamete with two big, with two dominant alleles, a dominant and a recessive, both dominant, dominant recessive. Over here, we will put the dad's possible gametes. Dad can have big R, little y, big R, little y, little R, little y, little R, little y. So the gametes 
always go on the outside of the Punnett square and the offspring always go inside the boxes. When we're doing a dihybrid cross, there are just more possible options depending on what the parents are. If we just for a second look at what if those parents were both heterozygous for both traits? If we have heterozygous for round and heterozygous for yellow, then the phenotype is going to be a round yellow P. Okay, if we cross two heterozygous round yellow pea plants, we get this possible combination of offspring. All of the gametes that these parents can produce is every possible combination. If we just look at our FOIL acronym. When we have a pea plant that is heterozygous for both traits, then they can produce a gamete with both dominant alleles a gamete with a dominant and a recessive, so the round trait and the green trait. They could have the wrinkled trait and the yellow trait, or they could have both recessive traits, the wrinkled and the green. So these are all of the possible gametes that heterozygous parents can produce. These round yellow parents can have any phenotype offspring there are going to be about nine out of 16 that are going to show both dominant traits. Three of them will show one dominant trait and one recessive trait. And three of them will have the other dominant trait. And one out of 16 will show both recessive traits. So this is if you cross two parents that are heterozygous. I suggest that you always draw 16 boxes and you always draw all of the possible gametes for each parent. It doesn't matter if the mom is at the top or the side, you know, use a capital letter for the dominant trait. Make sure your gametes have one of each of the chromosomes and then figure out your offspring the exact same way as you did for the monohybrid cross. So using these parents that we just looked at, Figure out all of the possible offspring phenotypes and genotypes and then see if you can figure out what is the probability that these parents will have offspring that are round and green.